Welcome to the breakable crate tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning how to make this crate that takes damage and breaks into pieces. So here's a crate. I can pick it up, drop it, 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 over and over again. Nothing's happening to it, totally fine, no big deal. But when I throw it at the floor or at another crate, it takes damage. And if I do that enough, It breaks. In this tutorial, I'm using the first person character controller we learned how to make in a previous video, which has a grab and throw function also covered in another video. Links to those tutorial as well as a link to download that controller are in the description. Let's take a look at the game objects and FSMs first, and then we'll put all that together from scratch. Opening up this breakable crate prefab, we'll see that this root item itself is a model and it has a collider on it and a rigid body. Nothing really special. And then it has two FSMs on it. The first FSM is called health, so let's open that up. Its first state, compare health, is a float compare that checks to see when the health float variable reaches zero, and then sends off to the next state when it's equal or less than zero. So in this next state, activate planks, this activates the game object crate pieces right here which is an empty game object with a bunch of planks nested underneath it, all of these. By default, this is deactivated, so it's kind of like they don't exist until we get to this state. I'm gonna turn it on so you can see it really quick. So, there they are. If I bring them over here really quick just to show you, those are all just the planks. They all look like this. I'm gonna put that back really quick. Now the thing is all these planks, they're just the models with rigid bodies and colliders on them. So back here in our FSM, after these pieces are activated, there is a set parent action. This unparents the crate pieces, game objects, from the crate. This is here so when we manipulate or deactivate the crate, these planks don't get affected. Then there's an explosion action, which pushes the planks apart to mess them up a little bit. And when that state's done, we go to this last state, deactivate crate, which deactivates the crate object. And thanks to unparenting those planks, the planks will stay, but the crate will disappear. The next FSM on this crate is called damage. So I'm gonna open that up. It starts with a wait for collision state, which waits for something to collide with it, and then stores the force of the collision in this collision force variable. When something does collide with it, it goes to this check force state, where a float compare is used to see how strong the impact of the collision was. If it's greater than eight, then it goes to the next state, and if it's less than eight, it goes back to wait for another collision. So if it is above eight, it goes to this next state, deal one point. Here it gets the current health from the other FSM, then subtracts one from it, and then sends that new value back to the health FSM. So basically when this crate is hit hard enough, its health goes down a point, and when its health is low enough, it spawns all those planks and deactivates the crate model, giving the illusion that it's been broken. Yeah, that's right. Video games are fake. It's a total sham. I don't even know what's real anymore. So let's build this up. You can download the parts used in this tutorial. There's a link in the description, or you can do this with anything else as long as you have the object and the broken pieces of it. You can even use a cube and a bunch of other cubes scaled to look like planks, whatever works. So now with my scene cleared, the first thing we're gonna do is add in a crate model. This crate is coming from Cinti's Polygon Prototype Pack. It's a super awesome pack filled with a ton of very common objects that you'd need to build out a prototype for a game. There's a link to that download in the description. All right, we'll start by taking this crate model, create a new empty game object, and we'll call this Crate Pieces. So we're just gonna use this empty game object to put in all of our plank models. I'm gonna grab this wood plank model that also comes from the Polygon Prototype Pack and I'm gonna put this inside of our crate pieces empty game object. All right, so I'm gonna zero it out over here. That just puts it at the center of everything. I'm gonna have this plank selected and hit Control D or Command D, and that duplicates it. And I'm just gonna rotate them around. And I'll grab both of these again. If you click the first one and then hold Shift while you click the second one, you'll select both of these. And you can hit Control D or Command D again. It'll duplicate both of those. And then I'm just gonna rotate those again. And I think I'll do that one more time. I think six pieces is enough. All right, so now I'm gonna select just the crate pieces game object. And I'm gonna deactivate it by unchecking this checkbox right here. 
All right, so our objects are set up. Now let's add these FSMs. So I'm gonna select the crate. I'm gonna add our first FSM. And we'll call this first one health. So you may have noticed something. We're currently editing this prefab in the scene and it's even been giving us notifications that it's being edited in the scene. It's reminding us that these edits are only applied to the prefab in the scene. And now even Playmaker is telling us this FSM has been added as an override to a prefab instance. So if we wanted to leave the prefabs of our models alone, we could come over here, right click on the crate prefab and unpack prefab completely. So what that does is it just makes it a game object like any other game object in the scene. So we don't have to worry about saving or editing changes that are connected to the prefab of it. Cool, and now that warning is gone. You could rename this as uh, breakable crate. So let's continue with this health FSM. In our first state, we'll call this compare health. And we're gonna throw in a float compare. And we're gonna compare a new variable that we can call health. We're comparing it to zero, so we could just leave that. And if it's equal or less than, we'll send the event called next. Equal or less than. This needs to constantly be checking, so we'll set this as every frame. And we'll send this off to the next state that we can call activate planks. At this activate plank state, we'll throw in a activate game object. And we're gonna specify the game object and drag and drop our crate pieces into here. And the rest of this is already set up how we need it. So we're gonna add in a set parent action and put it underneath that one. And again, we're gonna specify the game object as the crate pieces. And we're unparenting this, so we could just leave this set to nothing. Last thing in this state will be an explosion action. And putting this at the bottom. I'm gonna crank this force up to something like 20. And the radius will be, say, one. And this upwards modifier will be 20. This upward modifier does exactly what it sounds like it does. It adds some upward force to things on top of the force from the center of the explosion. The center of the explosion is gonna be coming from the center of the crate because the center values are set to zero, zero, zero. The zero, zero, zero of this crate are at the center. All right, so after all that, we'll just add a finished transition and we'll send off to the next state that we can call deactivate crate. Oops. Now at deactivate crate, all we need is an activate game object action which we'll use to deactivate the crate. So we can keep this set to owner and then we'll just uncheck the activate box, which is another way of saying deactivate the crate. That's everything we need for the health FSM. So let's move on to the damage FSM. We'll add in a new FSM, call it damage and we'll edit it. And the first state we'll call it wait for collision. It'll have a collision event action in it, which is saying it's waiting for another collider to touch the collider on this game object. And when that happens, we want to store the force into a variable called collision force. So we can store the force here, call it collision force. This is a float variable we can use later to decide whether or not the crate was hit hard enough to receive damage. We'll also send an event when there is a collision. So we have the send event and we could just call it next. Add that in. And that'll transition off to the next state that we can call check force. At the check force state, we need a float compare action to check if that collision force float was strong enough. Whatever we decide is strong enough will go here. But what is strong enough? Well, you can run some tests to see what suits your needs. So let's just leave this as is right now, and we'll go throw this crate around to see how much force gets applied in certain situations. Since I'm using the first person player controller that we were making in the previous tutorials, all I have to do to set this up as something that we can grab and throw around 
is go to the first FSM in here, which is our health FSM, and I'm gonna add in a bool called is grabbable and setting this to true. And this health variable, it needs to be set to something higher than zero because at this compare, it's just gonna compare zero to zero. So the health, we can give it something like three. That should be fine. And before we hit play, we just wanna make sure that this has a rigid body component on it. And it's using gravity and this is kinematic is off. Everything looks good here. We can just keep those defaults. All right, so let's keep an eye on this damage FSM and we'll see this float variable change as I toss it around. Whoop, okay, so that crate just went through the floor and I think it's because the mesh collider that comes on this Cinti asset, now you can leave this mesh collider on here and just select convex and it'll work just fine or you can add a component, box collider and that'll just put um, a box collider on it that fits the same dimensions of the box, just nice. And we don't need to change anything with that. Now watch this float variable when the box drops. Three point five. So it takes about three point five units of force when it hits when it hits the ground from that high up. Let's see how how much force it takes when we raise it from about this high up. Press play. 6.2. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a finish transition here that sends back, just so we can get a few different readings of the force as I throw it around. That's just temporary, this finished transition. All right, so I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna throw it and let's see. All right, the last one is about 1.7. Let's see, 20, it went up to 20. I'll pause the video. Look at that, 20. No, we didn't even need to pause for that one. That just shows 20. Yeah, okay. So 20 is the highest value it gets when I throw it really hard at the floor. Um, but throwing it up and kind of bouncing around, it's around like seven, anywhere between six and seven when you're throwing it around. That hits 18, because I threw it pretty far. So the number I picked that I think is a nice number to break a crate at was eight. So let's use eight. Let me get rid of this finished transition. Don't need to check that anymore. I think eight sounds good, because this should be able to survive some taller drops, but not too many, and should definitely not be able to withstand being thrown around much either. If it's less than that, we're gonna send back, I'm gonna send this back to the first state. Oops. But if it's greater than eight, we'll have it send off to next, which is the next state that we can call deal one point, or deal one damage. At the deal one damage state, we'll be updating the health FSM. So first we need to get a get FSM float, and we'll be getting our health FSM, its health variable, and storing it in a variable in this FSM that we'll also call health. All right, so then we want to subtract from that health. So we'll throw in a float subtract. We're gonna be subtracting from our health float. We'll subtract one point. So then we send this updated health back to the health FSM. So we'll need a set FSM float. And we'll be targeting the health FSM, the health float, and we're gonna be setting the value with our new updated version of it. So for example, the first time we hit it, it's gonna be getting three because three is the default health we have set up over there. And we're gonna be subtracting one from that. So it'll be two. And then we're sending that two back to the health. So then the health will go, okay, now I am at two health. All right, add a finish transition there and we'll send this back to the first state. 
All right, let's hit play. We can pick it up, drop it. Now you see, when I pick it up and drop it, it checks the force. You could see the FSM going to the check force, but it never makes it past there because we're not applying enough force to it to do damage. But if I throw it at the floor, it made it over to the deal one damage state because we applied enough force to it. If I do that enough times, right, there was one that it made it over and then we just did a second one. If I do it one more time, it should deal that last one, which will break the crate. <laughs> but that is not what we want. <laughs> so I think what's happening here is uh, we forgot to put rigid bodies on our planks. So stop this, come over to these planks. Let's just select all of them and we'll add component rigid body. All right, that should solve our problem. Grabbing it, throwing it at the floor. That's one damage, two damage, and three. There we go. Beautiful. If you want to release some stress, you can always take this breakable crate, go to the health FSM, and change this health to one. So it only needs to do one damage before it breaks. And then just put a bunch of these in here. Just control D, spread these around. So in this tutorial, we learned how to make a breakable crate that has a health which when low enough will give the illusion that it breaks and it'll spawn all these pieces. And that only happens when the damage being done to it is strong enough, when the force of the collision is strong enough to deal some damage to it. We did all this using a collision event, float compare, and using a get FSM and set FSM float to talk to the other health FSM. We use an explosion action to make the pieces fly around when they spawn, and we use activate game objects to make the pieces come into the world and for the crate to disappear. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.